walking th- there's a guy walking down the street in his Halloween outfit mm-hmm. and this guy was walking past him yo man and the guy was like what he said you look fucking great and he was like thanks man and it was just like that whole interaction was crazy <laughs> but it was so lovely at the same time yeah. it started off like right they're gonna be yeah like, oh okay <laughs> No, America's a mad, <laughs> nice and supportive. Yeah. And yeah, just good vibe. Hello, hello, hello. Hello. Hi, guys, and welcome to episode 165 of the Two Twos podcast. I am Nana. And I'm Ro. And together we are Two Twos. Is it 165? Yeah. Oh, I told someone the other day we have 172 episodes. So we're like, I'm <laughs> crying. That is hilarious. <laughs> oh. um, did you say 175? Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, it's only 10, 10, yeah. 10 episodes off. Almost, almost, almost. How you been? I mean, um, 2023 has just been... It's been a very, very roller coaster. Do you know what? The things that have been happening were definitely not on my bingo card. Like mm. when we were celebrating 2023 on New Year's Day, we were so happy. <laughs> We were having the time of our lives. We were having the time of our lives. We were so excited for the new year. And this year has just proven to be um, chaotic and just full of stress. Do you know what? I think that for me has been different. Mm-hmm. My year, so, oh, I mean, the year ain't finished yet. I don't know why we're doing year round up as the year's I finished. But I feel like it's it's been re- rewarding. Mm-hmm. But obviously because I've had of, op- new opportunities and mm-hmm. things like that. So that's been very grateful for that. And it feels like my career is going in a, in a direction mm-hmm. I needed to or wanted to. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. There's just something that's kind of there's, just like... Yeah, there's, it's something in the water. Do you know what I mean? Like, I mean, for me, I think my last year career-wise was much better for me. My personal, mm. you know, my personal growth, like as a filmmaker, whatever. This year has been not great yeah and obviously there's been the strikes as well so not being Mm -hmm. able to work so that's been very stressful but then also personally as well there's just been a lot going on and then even in the world you know there's more going on we need to burn the world to the ground yeah we need to start again we need to start again i think just leave it i think just leave it humans just leave it (laughs) humans don't deserve good things no just leave it like i just think that yeah in, in terms of that terrible year absolutely terrible terrible year then my career i feel my career has definitely been good for me mm. my mental health is much better than it was last mm. year uh, i could do more zeros in my bank account as always uh, yeah always yeah always. always but in regards to what's happening to the world yeah it's a bit mad like oh unfortunately i haven't been able to go i didn't go to the protest last uh last saturday but that, i went yeah. to the one the previous one and that was they were saying i don't know like a hundred thousand people so a bit more than that i think mm. and and saturday's one was like a million yeah you know apparently it took people like time to, to walk. walk from one you know mm. from well, some, some of it would be like five minutes yeah to from, like, like 40 minutes from hyde park to obviously like victoria it took ages mm. to walk. it took like three hours to wow. walk there and we've 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 been we've been to a few protests mm. and obviously like it's never been that many people mm. ever Mm-mm. but it feels like everyone came out for you know to march for and protest for a ceasefire in in palestine yeah and it was just so beautiful to see but then also you had like tommy robinson or whatever his name is like you know the edl far, people edl the far, right. far right being like them kind of them kind of vibe people coming um and fighting the police which didn't make any sense to me like obviously the police were like guarding the center so tough and they were fighting the police do you know what's so funny yeah this group of people they don't make sense you, they just they're dumb like because you'd never see them coming out for anything to do with things that affect them yeah like you don't see them coming out when they're when they're trying to protest against increasing tuition fees mm-hmm. when they're taking your benefits increasing home like anything that's to do with bettering the country yeah, they're that, never they're, there. that they're so proud mm-hmm. to be a part of they're never there but when it comes down to if it's anything that's to do with ethnic mm-hmm. they're always they're there, to there. Fight. i was born in this country okay if you're born in this do country you, why don't you fight for it do then? you think it makes you special that you're born in this country I was also born in this country. Fam, so what? You don't stand for anything no. to better the country that you're so you passionate about. Like, it just doesn't make sense. They're just there to be racist. Like, all you can come and say is, I was born in this country. I was born in this country. Somebody was like, so was I. Yeah. Like, and they didn't even know what to say back. Exactly. Because you're stupid. Because it doesn't even make any sense. And the fact that they're calling them counter-protesters. 
Just call a spade a fucking spade. Well, our good sister has been calling it. She's been sacked. She's been Thank calling God for that. She's been calling these these marches, these protests, um, hate marches. But nobody can call these far right people like what they are racists. And she called them out. If she was, if she didn't make the comments that she makes, the people in government, the people in power, and things like that, they need to be careful with well, the what they, they say they use mm. because they can easily incite violence. Mm-hmm. And that could lead to death. Mm-hmm. I think that something happened. Um, I think a homeless man mm-hmm. was oh he was burnt was, was burnt yeah the other day or was it last night or something yeah last night and this it come just off of Suella's making remarks mm-hmm. about homelessness yeah about like them clearing up tents or whatever the case may be and whatever like if you you've made those kind of comments now somebody had decided that 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 person that was taking shelter in the in that alleyway. Mm-hmm. It's not worth it. And yeah. obviously, the, the, the remarks from the government back to their actions. It's so inhumane. Do you know what I'm saying? And make people go out there and, and they believe that these people don't matter. Mm-hmm. Like, homeless people don't matter. Mm-hmm. Like, how dare you? Like, we can't have people in government who are so out of touch. Like, you people cannot relate to the majority of people in this country. Clearly like, not. you can't. Clearly not, because you're standing there saying that Israel has a, has a right to defend itself. And you have most a million people out on the streets on the weekends. And this is supposed to be for a ceasefire. This is supposed to be a democracy. We're supposed to be living in a democracy. Exactly. So basically, what we say doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And the thing is, even that sentence saying Israel has a right to defend itself, Israel does have a right to defend itself, just like every other country does. But what you don't have the right to do is start a genocide. Mm. But it didn't gloss it in the fact that you're defending your country. Mm-hmm. No one is stupid, and you know I thank God for social media because if it wasn't social media, we wouldn't know damn things. We wouldn't really understand the extent to how things yeah. are going, how things are, how, how things are yeah. going on. And you know, what I mean, a lot of people are afraid to speak about it in their platforms. Mm-hmm. A lot of people are afraid that they're gonna get cancelled or certain people are not gonna work for them. But you just have to have some integrity. Yeah. Like you gotta stand for something. You gotta stand for something. And it's really important for me to be on the right side mm-hmm. of history. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? Like I saw my children and grandchildren X, Y, and Z also stand for the, what is correct people are dying like mm. i don't think people understand how precious life is the fact that over ten thousand people have been murdered ten thousand people they don't know the numbers anymore they don't they can't count anymore. They, obviously they can't that's like a rough estimate mm. but even if you put like a hundred people in a room together that's a lot of fucking people mm-hmm. ten thousand people do you know what i mean like People need to recognize how precious life is. You only get one. Do you yeah. know what I mean? You're not coming back. Yeah. Once you once you once your life is over, you're not coming back. Life is precious. Mm. But it just seems like nobody gives a shit. Our government have a chance to to call for a ceasefire. They could do that. Yeah. They could do that. It, and it needs to be called for now. It's, like it's just everything it's re- what's happening is a living nightmare. Everything is always about money and power. Yeah. Like, and nobody cares about human life. No. And that to me is just disgusting. Yeah. Like it's absolutely disgusting. Like we can't No have... one should be getting killed. No like one. just nobody. No do you know one. what I'm saying? Whether it's, it's Israelis or it's Palestinians, no one should be getting killed. But like the fact that they have a chance to stop stop something that's happening, f- stop people from being murdered and then not doing it. Yeah, that's the that's the problem. That is the problem. And do you know what's crazy? Because in 30 years' time, they're going to release a movie that they're, they're yeah, going to make millions they're gonna out pretend, of and they're, gonna and they're going to act like they were on the right side right. of history and that's going to piss me off fam because I was there I was there and I was there on social media watching everything that's happening in real time via the journalists who are on the front on line the ground at this point the journalists are the people who are defending their country through the images mm. through sharing through sharing what they're experiencing what they're going through yeah. and these graphic images and put, they're just putting themselves out there just to show the truth yeah because without that without showing dead babies mm-hmm. without sh- i've seen bodies of people that have been mutilated yeah, yeah. i've just seen remembered. things that like i just can't believe but they're, they're living thing. that yeah and if they don't, if they don't show all of these things, then it's like it didn't happen. It's like it didn't happen. It's exactly. It's like it didn't happen. It's like the, if, all the governments can continue to be like push their propaganda. Has, yeah, do you know what I'm saying? Like, and now who are the who are the true terrorists? Mm. Like, that's, who that's are what the I'm terrorists? Saying. Like people will say like, oh, you know, Palestinians are terrorists or whatever. Who are the real terrorists here? 
Do you know what Who I mean? Are because the terrorists? You, like the way they've been treated, I've seen I've seen even like Jewish people been treated harshly by Israelis, like mm-hmm. other other yep. other groups of Jewish people. And that's being, been disgusting to see as well. Right. Mm-hmm. Like this is not about religion. No. Do you know what I mean? This is not about religion. This is this is this is just racism. Yeah. It's pure racism. This is a Islamophobia. Yeah. It's crazy, like bombing hospitals. Where people are seeking refuge. And isn't that like that's against the law to do that? It is to, against like, the law. But the thing is, yeah, they paramedics are paramedics and stuff. They're committing a lot of war crimes. Yeah. But no one is holding them to account. Yeah. None of the none of these Western countries are holding them to account. Yeah. And there's a reason why we just don't know that reason. We just we, don't know we that don't reason. Know the reason. And I just don't want to see that movie in 30 years' time. I don't want to see that movie in 30 years' time acting like so, putting some one one American or British person mm-hmm. as the saviour of what right, happened. Right, right. You know what I'm That's saying? That's what they do though. Like they create issues and then they're, they'll go and, and do Captain Save a Hole. Hmm. Like, does that make sense? Don't, just don't create the issues. No. Like what I'm saying is like, we can't have leaders who are so out of touch. Like Rishi Sunak it, and his wife are like, the, <laughs> was it 222 richest, they're rich. richest people in the, in the world or huh? something like that? Like, come on. Like, they have no idea. They, they are so out of touch. They're so they out of touch. No like idea. they have no fucking idea how the rest, like the rest of the world, what the rest of the world needs. Yeah, and if they didn't even have friends, they bought David, David Cameron, who started all of this shit. By the way, David Cameron started oh. this with your shopping referendum. Yeah, he, he's back in. He's back in in the cabinet now. You know what? <laughs> It, I don't the, have shame. I'm not embarrassed. The, the mess is not gonna stop. <laughs> I do not embarrass. The mess is not gonna stop. Somebody that has created all of this, these problems in government. Our government is not real. I just do you know what feel it feels like? like? It feels like we're living in a simulation, and it also feels like we're living in a in a in, in a season in a season of scandal. <laughs> <laughs> like that's what it feels like. Like it's, it's your whole season. It's a whole season of scandal. It's not just one episode. We need a monologue for Moses. Listen, <laughs> like I um I've had it up to here, mm-hmm. and this is why I usually just ignore it because it's just too much. Like life is hard. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Life is really life hard. is so difficult, but we've got leaders who don't even give a shit about yeah. homeless people, who don't give a shit about immigration, mm-hmm. like who don't give a shit about um, teachers, who don't give a shit about nurses. Um, N- doctors, nurses, or people that are starving, going hungry in this country. They just don't give a shit about anybody. If you're if you're okay with seeing what's happening in Palestine, you just don't give a shit about anybody. Right. Like you just don't give a shit. Mm-hmm about outside of your own kids and family that what you just don't care about anyone none of our leaders are and the thing is david cameron made a speech in 2010 that said the people of gaza should be free Mm. i'm really interested to see now he's back in cabinet what he's going to say barack obama was always free palestine he went he became now he's saying he's doing whatever else is saying he's part of the propaganda as well yeah yeah like he's part yeah. of it. Like if you're not They're calling all... for a ceasefire, then you're part yeah. of it. That's the only thing you can do is call for but a ceasefire. But he also, when he was in government, he signed some sort of like agreement to give them either money. I think it was money. Like, he's, he's, he's part of it. You've got blood he's in your complic- hands. He's complicit. Yeah. There's so you have many... got blood in your hands, babe. Our government, the Western government is complicit in, in the murders of Palestinian Listen. people. And that's, that's just what it is. But yeah. it's free Palestine all day, every day. Free Palestine, call right. for the ceasefire. Yeah. Ceasefire is the only option. No, not only. not 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 pauses. No. Because what is the point of pausing and then starting bombardment again? No, we're not gonna. We're not a, a humanitarian that's, pause. That's is not okay. It's, it's not, it's not humanitarian. Enough. There's nothing humanitarian. There's nothing about human about that. Fucking pause, man. No, we'll give you a break from getting bombed. You know, give it twenty four hours, and then we'll come back. Shall like, we? Does that make any no. sense? No. But ceasefire is the only thing we're calling that's for. That's the out only here. option. Mm-hmm. That's the only option. You know, this thing didn't start on October the seventh. This yeah. predates October the seventh. Mm-hmm. And the fact that people can't see it and just using like you know Hamas, Hamas, Hamas. We condemn Hamas. Yeah. If you want to hit, that's, nobody, that's what no, you want to Ain't nobody hit. fucking with Hamas. Ain't nobody no. fucking with any form of terrorism. But just killing. Thousands of people. It's Doesn't also make, terrorism. It's also terrorism. We don't fall for any sort of terrorism, including the one that you're doing. Like, we just don't. That part. <laughs> right. Ciao. We have it's been... so mad because when I went to New York, yeah, guys, I went to New York. And mm-hmm. um, also, some of you have been complaining that, that we haven't had enough episodes. Somebody even messaged me today, was like, where's the podcast? And I was like, we actually was going to record, um, but our studio time got cancelled today. We're here now. And Someone... I just want to say, guys, because some people have been. Um, 
have been crossing boundaries Mm -hmm. and being a bit too entitled about the podcast and how often we put out episodes we're meant to put out episodes every single wednesday that is true sometimes we just can't get studio time to be honest Mm -hmm. sometimes it's just we just booked studio time too late and somebody's got there before us sometimes we have other things going on in life yeah we need we need to organize our lives it's not just the podcast that we have going on yeah and we don't take breaks from the podcast a lot of podcasts take two months Mm -hmm. off three months off whatever the case may be we don't take we're not this is not a seasonal podcast mm. we're just on all mm-hmm. the time do you know what i mean we're always working through every single period that there is even when we do go on holidays we try to record so that when we're away there's a, something drops mm-hmm. but it just isn't always possible but this podcast we put our all into it do you know what i'm saying we give our all we, and it is a priority in our lives mm-hmm. like it's a priority up there we treat the podcast like we treat our full-time job sometimes when you go to you need to call in sick yeah that, yeah. that part exactly it just is what it is like we're human beings we're gonna have things coming up we're gonna have things like that are that might stop us from recording or putting out um episodes it just is what it is like someone messaged me about oh you just need to be like uh proactive i'm gonna say like i, I feel like this came out of love do you know what i mean it came mm-hmm. from a place of love like you enjoyed the podcast which is great but the enticement is a bit too much like we are human beings we've got other things going on like at the end of the day we is our choice to put out this podcast it's our choice to make content we are not going to be slaves to content (laughs) (laughs) you are creating content i'm so sorry but no like we put ourselves into this podcast and we also put our own money into this podcast this podcast is not funded by anyone it's not sponsored by any any organizations it does it comes we don't have a team we do not we have have ella who edits the podcast and shout out to ella it's just Mm. the three of us like people have producers people have social media managers people have guys a lot of your favorite podcasts have a team behind them right not this one right we do not have a team and the again we put more into the podcast like money wise mm-hmm. than we get out right money wise mm-hmm. so this is something that we do because we enjoy doing it and we want to share this platform with you guys but work with us to continue making it fun right because the moment it doesn't become fun we're out share anyways. it also because you people will be talking 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 oh where's the episode share the podcast the same people ask us about episodes we've never seen you share it. we haven't seen you share it <laughs> share the pod- share the podcast when yeah. it comes out every wednesday when it comes out res- like respond to um respond to the um the previews that we put out respond to the content that we put on on, on social media you don't you guys don't really do that yeah because to be honest with you guys i'm gonna be very very honest and very transparent the reason why tutus doesn't have sponsorship the reason why tutus doesn't get signed the reason why tutus doesn't have a team and stuff like that is because we don't have the numbers it's because we don't have the numbers it's right say point mm-hmm. blank period we have so many meetings about taking this podcast elsewhere and the answer is always you don't have the numbers mm. and it's always like ugh, maybe we can do it from like a passion point of view mm. maybe we can do it from like a you guys are a but what's the word that, that was used in the meeting before? Um, I don't want to say who we had the meeting with, but there was a, there was a word that was used that maybe we are... It's a niche. No, it's not like it's a niche. That we're just like... It's almost like something... When you have like a charitable organisation... Mm-hmm. I don't want to say it's like we're activists, mm-hmm. but they kind of put us in the activist oh, right. bracket. Like community. Like so. community community mm-hmm. interest kind of mm-hmm. bracket. And it's like, no, we're not activists. We want to be part of the mainstream. Mm-hmm. We wanna we wanna enjoy what everyone else enjoys, you know, podcasting and things like that. But it's this is a numbers game. Mm. To further to further our career, it's a numbers because game. Because it's about money. It's about money. So they need to see the numbers mm. so know that they're gonna have a return mm-hmm. on whatever they put into right. us. Like, so we don't have the numbers to put this to it to, so to further this podcast in the ways that we want to further it mm. so until then it's going to be on our dime and until then it's going to be on our time and until then it's 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 we do approach it like a job mm. but it's not a job yeah it's, it's, it is a hobby mm, do you know what i'm hobby. saying yeah i feel like people see us do certain things and put I think we're up or attracts, uh, again next to certain brands it doesn't yeah. mean that we're up guys <laughs> no, it no, really it doesn't. Doesn't. It doesn't it doesn't mean that we're up like that so yeah like we appreciate the feedback and the support and stuff like that but this is the reality of what tutu's podcast is Mm. do you know what i'm saying and sometimes to be honest sometimes we might even need a little break from tutu's because sometimes it's frustrating that you put so much in Mm. and you get so little back Mm. and then but you have people that are criticizing that you didn't put you haven't put we haven't put out episode before this one Mm -hmm. two weeks yeah like two or three weeks weeks. now i've been to i've been to new york in that time you know what i'm saying and I'm allowed to do that. 
like, I'm allowed to do that because y'all ain't paying me. Exactly. As I said, like, YouTube probably pays us like 20 pounds. Like, YouTube probably pays us like yeah. 20 pounds. We're not going to be slaves. Like, to, we're not going to be slaves to the content. content. Like, let's not do that. Yeah. You know? Let's not be entitled. What I've seen recently is a lot of entitlement. Um, the other day, I did the Not Gonna Lie Anonymous mm. you know, thing on my Instagram. And I do it on my Instagram because I get more engagement on mine as opposed to doing it on tutus. Um, and I asked for people specifically to send me dilemmas because, you know, we were reading them out on the mm -hmm. podcast. And people were just very, very entitled, like, about the podcast, about my personal life. And, you know, as much as we put ourselves out there, we share our experiences with you. We we put out the information that we want you to know. Do you know what I mean? Like, if we haven't put that out there, you're not entitled to that information. You're not entitled to the information about our, my, our sex lives or our love lives or anything that's personal to us. Unless we choose to put it out there. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I just feel like there needs to be some sort of like... There needs to be some sort of like, I don't know, like not not separation because we love talking to people that, you know, listen to this podcast and stuff like that. But there needs to be some sort of like respect, like there needs to be some mutual respect, you know? Yeah, because sometimes I can tell when people ask me questions. For example, somebody when I was away, somebody sent me a, a quite a few people sent me this uh, a, a clip. There's a clip on YouTube of um, I don't know if I've showed it to you. There's a video of a lesbian couple doing some crazy shit in america and they used a short clip of me and yeah. my ex it's, it's another video there's two now yeah i'll never tell you there's a second one so they use a video of me and my ex um to not to narrate some terrible crime basically mm. so quite a few people sent it to me and stuff like that and i asked from the person one of the people that sent it to me just out of, I was out of interest. It wasn't to be attacking the person because the person did come to me in good faith, to mm. be fair. So I was, because you can always tell when someone's not right. doing it in good faith, yeah. but this person was doing it in good faith. So I was like, um, out of interest, have you sent this to my ex? <laughs> and because and it's better people send it to me and I just know that none of these people are sending this to my ex. Mm. It's like when you see my picture in the airport. Guys, I know my picture's in the airport. I know. It's, yeah. the, it's the back, There's about two, I think there's about three more years mm. of it being up there. And I've def definitely made peace with the fact that the picture is there. Mm. It's a nice picture. The photographer wasn't a good, really good photographer. Mm -hmm. And my relationship was a moment. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? It's a moment that I learned so much from. And I've grown so much from being in that relationship due to what happened in our relationship. And I can only take away good things from that. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? So no matter how, what my relationship stands with the person today, it's still, I just appreciate the moment that we had, yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, so I, but I know the picture's there. I don't, don't, you don't need, you don't need yeah, you don't need to. Yeah, don't, every two weeks I get that picture. And on top of that as well, the, this other YouTube thing I asked and she said no. And she was really apologetic. And I was like, no, I'm asking because I just find it interesting why people feel like they can send, send this it thing to, to me. Yeah. And, for, and it's people that don't know me, like you guys mm -hmm. don't know me. And they just said that because they listen to a podcast and they feel like there's a familiarity they have from hearing my voice every mm -hmm. single week. And I get that. You feel like we you feel like you feel like you know us. Yeah. Yeah. And I love that you feel like you know us because it means that we're connecting with you. Mm -hmm. That's what we meant to do with mm -hmm. this podcast. However, um, just make sure you do it intact. Yeah. Have you have to approach it a certain way because we're still human beings mm. and we still go through things that we don't talk to you guys about on the podcast mm -hmm. in our in our behind the mic mm -hmm. behind these cameras there's so much that we go through there's so many layers to us yeah and there's some days that we're doing better than other days so when you not we're not saying don't approach us with things but just be careful yeah how you do it. yeah be careful how yeah. you do it i mean like you know just i understand that people are invested in us mm -hmm. and our podcasts and our lives and stuff our relationships I, I get that i completely get that but i think there's a line mm -hmm. that sometimes is crossed and i don't appreciate that line I, just because we're visible doesn't mean that we can be subjected to just anything and i'm gonna stand on that like mm -hmm. i don't care just because we you know put ourselves there and we're visible no nah, that doesn't mean that we have to just take anything do you yeah. know what i mean so like the questions about my ex and whether we're friends or da -da -da, just <laughs> let it go. let it go we are friends period so what Finished. let it go man we're mm -hmm. not the first people to be friends and we're not going to be the last people to be friends like mm -hmm. that's our choice let it go. Like, if you're not in a relationship with me, it's not your business. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Like, mm -hmm. let it go. Those those questions, they have to die now because it's just given obsessed at this point. And, and we have both been single for almost two yeah, years now. Yeah, yeah. It's actually almost two It's years. almost two years. And the thing is, if we refer, if we, if we refer to those relationships, if through the stories we're telling on the podcast or different things, 
that's it's up to us to do it's that to and it's also when we speak this podcast has always been about experiences now those relationships are a part of our experiences mm. when we were in relationships with them we spoke about other past things we've always mm-hmm. referred to all our relationships yeah and i feel like i sometimes maybe because you feel like you know you're, we're talking about those exes mm. that you feel like mm, you can say something but like we speak about they're not the only exes that we have yeah there's other exes we have other experiences outside of them there's other we've even had we've even had romantic situations since then a lot (laughs) yeah (laughs) quite a few since then I don't want to say say that we've been we've been out on the street but I mean we've had one or two situations since then each yeah so it's not the be all and end all. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? There's just so much more. Like, they, 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 those, those relationships were important relationships they were. for us. They were substantial relationships. Y- exactly. Yeah. But we have other experiences. Yeah. And other th- other situations that are also important to us too. Exactly. So let's let it die. Let it die. <laughs> let it go. Please. <laughs> Divest. And that's all I'm going to say about mm. that. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Cool. And so should we talk about long distance relationships? Yeah, we should. Long distance Somebody relationship. asked me if I would be like, I got lots of questions. I didn't get one single dilemma. Yeah. That's what <laughs> I asked for. And somebody asked me if I would actually do like a, be in a long distance relationship. And um, I can't say whether I would until I, until I am. Until, you know, sometimes I think you can meet someone who would make you want to be in a long-term relationship because um in a long distance relationship because you like them that much you know what i mean mm. it's not everyone that you're going to meet and you're going to think oh this is going to work out or i want to put myself in this situation no it yeah. depends on it depends on your feelings for the person right yeah. somebody i can meet somebody they could make me feel like oh yeah we can do this yeah do you know what i mean but yeah it just depends on the person but um so i don't know if i'd be in a long a long distance relationship <laughs> yeah it's so funny because temi tayo was like a couple months ago we said we wouldn't yeah we when we and i was just like oh yeah we did say that we did say that we did say that and because you are in a long term a long distance something i can't say no or yes yeah i just don't know i didn't see myself right talking to somebody so i went to new york guys everyone knows i went to new york Mm -hmm. or if you don't know now you know and i half the trip was a solo trip i've always wanted to go to new york um on a solo trip so i went but since booking the trip, I started talking to somebody online who is based in New York, who lives in New York. And so half of it was I was spent with said person mm. trip. And I'm now in a long distance dating. I'm not dating exclusively. I just like to put that out there. <laughs> I'm still dating in the UK as well. Mm. But like I'm dating somebody who lives in New York too. And um it's really been interesting. It's been very eye-opening as to what communication really is. Mm. Like we always say that communication really is really important in relationships and it is, but communication is so, so important, important in long distance. Mm. Like there's just, that's all you have yeah. ultimately until you meet up or until the next time you meet up or whatever the case may be. Like, for example, if, if me and this person, and also there's also a time difference. Mm-hmm. So if me and this person don't speak for, I don't know, like most of the day it kind of raises issues it raises issues like why well, have you not spoken mm. do you know what i'm saying and it's like i but at the same time you have to communicate like i'm busy mm-hmm. or so, so we do but i just noticed there's there's a lot of more reassurance that needs to take place as well yeah because you're not too you're not physically together so yeah. something that would be reassuring you just see in your face do you know what i mean like you 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 don't have that yeah do you know what i mean and words of affirmation and this i feel like this just switch situation is good for me because i'm not a words of affirmation babe like in, i'm not good at giving, giving it yeah. yeah i'm giving words of affirmation is my worst like thing like so if you're somebody yeah. whose words of affirmation is up there mm. in your love languages i usually fail in that in that area mm-hmm. i'm just not good at it because i'm i show i show love a yeah. lot with the things that i do mm-hmm. for somebody and quality time and things like that well, I'm not also, really like a, it's also how we've been socialized yeah as african yeah <laughs> you know yeah. you know african people yeah like our house my household was not the most um affirming for mm, words right so right same. that's just how i am mm-hmm. do you know what i'm saying but this situation has forced me mm-hmm. to bring that out of me mm-hmm. because if I'm not telling this person what I feel about them, there's no way for them to know because so, I can't show right, them. Right, right. Do you know what I mean? I can't she could pop up to their workplace to take exactly. them on a date. I can't like send them flowers. I can't, but I mean, I can send them flowers, but I, yeah, anyway. Mm-hmm. I can't like just, 
I just can't do what I would mm. normally do. Do you know what I'm saying? Right. So there's just that is forced out of me, and I, I, that's something that I wanted to improve about myself mm-hmm. as well because it's, I feel like it's been a number one complaint across the board for women <laughs> that I date. Yeah, that they don't know how I feel about them because I don't say how I feel about them. So I'm I'm, I'm, I'm a work in progress. You know what? I've no, I've I've witnessed you being like <laughs> trying to be sweet to be like. <laughs> In, in like relationships and stuff but it's always so like so jokey because we're not used to it I was just like oh you look nice <laughs> <laughs> like I even struggled to say that but now a lot of times I compliment mm. because I'm working on it so now I'm like oh how you look gorgeous mm. in my head I'm thinking I'm going to have I'm saying it like yeah. I'm trying to say it so do you know what I mean so, like but it's awkward sometimes yeah no I, I hear that yeah I hear that I think what's what's the like what's the hardest thing is that is it that you can't see each other that's the hardest thing yeah the hardest thing is we can't see each other no actually the hardest thing is not knowing where this is going yeah okay i think that's the hardest thing because Mm -hmm. ultimately we live different lives in different countries we're in different stages of our lives as well and i think that when you when you live in the same country at least you can find a kind of find a medium okay as to where where you can go but with this this person Mm -hmm. Either I have to li- move there, they have to move here, or we both have to move somewhere. Yeah, and yeah, you just like, don't know. Like, and, and, if, and it's just, and also, in but before that, before you even make that decision, you have to see them a few times. Yeah, because you have to get to know them. You have to get to know them. You have to get to know them what they're like in person. Mm. And so I spent like a long weekend with them in New York, and we had such a good time. It was very wholesome, and we got lit as well. We got lit in the club, mm. and we just had so much fun. And there was a lot of PDA. I've never PDA like this in my life. There was a lot of PDA. There was a lot of PDA, and. I don't PDA like this in my life. And <laughs> I just can't I, believe it. I, I I'm not a PDA kind of baby. You know I'm not really a PDA kind of baby. Yeah. And it's like when you saw me and what's her name in the music video, of Cat Ben's music video, yeah. you were like, oh, I've not actually realized I've never seen you kiss before. <laughs> <laughs> is that what I said? Yeah. yeah. He's like, I've never seen you two kiss before. <laughs> and I was thinking to myself, yeah, it's true. That I'm is like a PDA kind of babe. Hilarious. And but this one, everyone saw us kissing boy. And this, yeah. And um so when we went on different way, the separate ways after a few days I'm like oh shit like the the, the physical touch you part felt that was I missing. felt that it was missing yeah. I can, even now I can still feel that, mm. feel that it's missing um, and yeah there's just it's it's definitely strengthening I think strengthening mm. my communication mm-hmm. and how I see people's needs now because I really need to make an effort to know what her needs are right so and vice versa as well she she wants to and she's also americans are different like they're just like okay by three months they <laughs> what, what are we do, like what are we doing here what are we doing here she's not trying to waste her time mm. she's not trying to be in a talking stage for ten, a year do you know what i'm saying tired, honestly so free us man free us but this is not i'm not in it just gotta say i'm not in exclusive. exclusive but yeah I just is just my experience of dating this mm. person because it's abroad. <laughs> yeah, no. The thing about the PDA is, um, I really love that for you. Yeah, it felt yeah. lovely. I loved I, it. I, I love that for you because I've never seen you like PDA like mm. that. Like, no, I haven't. No, <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen that. And I've seen you with a few, mm-hmm. you know, women mm-hmm. now. Like, but I've never seen you like PDA no. like that. The PDA was PDA, and obviously you see me do it. And you're just like, oh, that's just like, that's yeah. just like, that's just nana. Like, but it's really nice because it feels like you're in this bubble. Mm-hmm. It feels like there it is no one bubble. else around you. It's just you two. You can only yeah. see each other. That's definitely how it felt. And like. you just can't keep your hands off each other. Yeah. And I think that's the best, like, that's the best kind of, I'm not going to say love, but that's the best kind of like romance. Yeah. Like, you when, know, when we were going to the summit, yeah, it was in the queue. Mm-hmm. The queue was quite long. And, do you know when you just that one couple that are just doing the most? <laughs> yes. <laughs> we were the couple doing the most. But it's nice. And like people's kids were just looking and like, da, 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 da. and I was, she was like, we that couple, we really that couple doing the most right now. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, we yeah. are that couple doing the most. I, I was, she was like, do you mind? That's why I know. And she was like, leave it to my. <laughs> We were doing it was all the way up until that summit, girl. Awesome. And it just felt so comfortable. Nice. Yeah, it? It was, yeah, it was so comfortable. And I think I don't think it was because it was in another country. Mm. I, don't think it was, I just think we were just very comfortable with each other. Do you know what? As well, it's like um, you know, you're different with different people. Yeah. And I think you're like you two are able to be these people with each other. Mm-hmm. You know, because you allow for that like space. You give each other that yeah. space to do that, which is like you're not going to be like that with everyone. Yeah. No. no. Sometimes people just bring that shit out of you. Yeah. Yeah. It's nice though, man. 
said it was nice though. It was nice. Also, I went out to the to the sort of some queer events. I went to three queer events when I was out there. Um, shout out to the people who came up to me in the club at the woods mm. to say that they listened to two twos. That was like for me, that was very affirming. Mm. That was very like I didn't expect it. It's obviously, we know that we have listeners in other listeners in other countries. Yeah, but we don't expect to actually meet them. <laughs> do you know what yeah, I mean to, to, to fly like across the world and uh, yeah I didn't yeah. expect to go across the world for a week mm-hmm. and meet anyone that says they listen to T2s and yeah. we have I have to shout out the Dyke NYC page because they be sharing oh the fuck God. out of this yeah, podcast yeah they do and it's just so lovely to feel that support and even in person meet people and mm. feel that support in person and we took I took pictures of somebody as well and that was really nice of them just to show that love it was just I just wanted to know it meant, it meant a lot to mm-hmm. us to, for you guys to be approaching us and let us know that you share the podcast with your friends and things like that because that is what we need yeah. you know what I'm saying that's just what we need mm-hmm. um but I did go to the scene, to the queer events. Yeah. I went to one called The Woods. The Woods is was on a Wednesday. I think it's every Wednesday. It's a bit like Sheba. Mm-hmm. But it's um, a bit more multicultural. That's another thing about New York. I didn't feel black in mm. New York. Do you know what I'm saying? I thought they, maybe they might live there and feel the They feel black, yeah. But as a, somebody come from the UK... Mm-hmm. I didn't feel that but black in London. Our things are more segregated. Yeah, like... Mm. There was a lot of ethnic minorities mm. in the UK, in, in New York, as there are here as well. But it just... Makes more. It was just... Yeah, like, it just was a bit different. I didn't mm. feel black all the time. Because I, I feel think, like... I didn't, sit, I didn't sit on the subway and mm-hmm. notice I was the only black person. Like, sometimes on the tube, you could be the only black person mm-hmm. in the carriage. Do you know what I'm saying? I don't really feel like that in London, you know? But I didn't feel all... Per, even person of colour, but it was not one time... If anything, the white people were the minorities. Mm. <laughs> if anything. So interesting, yeah. Probably, yeah. Probably because of where you were, but also, like, I feel like... You know, I think the, the only event that's similar to, like, the events there is probably, like, Pussy Palace, where it's, like, multicultural... Yeah, you know I mean, yeah. So yeah, so I, I mean, I went to Black Queer events, mm-hmm. and I went to so the Woods is run by a white person. It's not a black event, but mm-hmm. it's a lot of black people were there. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess because shout out to Bree, Bree was DJing. So I actually the solo part of my trip, I stayed at Bree's in Bree's apartment, and that was and we had a little dog called Coco, me and Coco at the beginning. <laughs> we weren't getting along, but towards the end of the trip, yeah, besties. You see each other. We were fighting in the beginning, yeah. Besties wedding. Yeah, but you did come into Coco Space. Though. I came to Coco Space. Coco yeah. wasn't used to seeing yeah. somebody in their space. Mm. So Brie is like a dancehall DJ, soca, black people music. So I guess when Brie goes and DJs at this event, they bring out all of the black people. Mm. So there was quite a lot of black people. It was Halloween as well. And you know, Americans love a Halloween. Mm. So everybody was dressed up and things like that. And then um, that was, so that was my first queer night out. And then I went to... A Halloween party by Raw Honey called Euphoria. So Euphoria and um, Raw Honey, I guess, is one of the main black run queer events. I feel like it felt like only women were there. Mm-hmm. I don't remember if it was, like women or non-binary people. I don't remember if they were like men. Yeah, there might have been one, but I don't know if that's because this, I don't know why. Mm. But it just felt like there was a lot of women and non-binary people there. Um, it might be as segregated as it is here. Like, yeah, we have our like girls parties, they boys. Yeah, parties. maybe because I wasn't sure it was specific mm. to being. I don't know, but anyway, had a good time. Um, yeah, that was a good time. I mean, that was. I thought the music could be better. I'm gonna be honest. I feel like the music wasn't that great. To be honest, yeah, but <laughs> I think that is one of the main events. They seem to have events quite regularly. They had like a uh, quiz night the other day and things mm. like that, and everyone's of age. Everyone's oh really? Yeah. What's yeah. people on the thirties? I as had girl. I did not meet anybody who were in their early twenties. God, like 21, 18 you Really are ages. in the tr- tr- uh, yeah. Like they were in, deep in the twenties and deep in the thirties. Like out there, wow. everybody was our age. Yeah, wow. so that was nice. And um, there was another event I went to the next day. I don't remember what it was called, but I, I, don't, I don't think it was actually a queer event. Mm. But over there, they don't have that many black queer events. So. But they have black queer DJs. So when black queer DJs DJ places, they bring black people. It, yeah, yeah, it brings the queers. Mm. So this was very. It was the po- a very popular black queer DJ. I think it's called D- DJ Ken Dollars or something like that. Listen, the set went off. Really, that was the best set I saw out there. Mm. Um, they they even played Central C. Oh, really? They even played the Central C. Song. Yeah, our bitches and another one and some other one. Um. So there was Afrobeats, dance hall. There was Soka. Like, yeah, this mm. one was given variety. I know they love their ski, but they try to sign up That's too. good. Yeah, it was yeah. good. And the crowd was loving it. Again, it was Halloween themed. 
Um, I went as a parrot the first night. The second night, I went as some version of Hugh Hefner. <laughs> Wait, I didn't see this costume. I just wore the hat. That's why. Oh. I didn't do the rest. I just wore the Hugh Hefner hat. Wore the edit. I just wore my own normal clothes. Oh, okay. But the parrot one, I did the costume mm. for that one. Yeah. And... Um, yeah, that was my experience. And there was I, obviously Brie as well. The person, I was, the person I was staying with, does does also does events, but I didn't have an event on. They had an event on the day I was leaving, so I couldn't go to their event. Mm. But all in all, I had such a good time in New York, mm. and I'll be back. You will go back, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. not just for the girl. <laughs> I I've been to, I went to New York with an ex, and she was an ex at the time, and mm-hmm. it, I think it it was. It was a, it was a good experience, but I feel like I would I would want to go with my friends to see yeah. if that that experience. Would I think it'll be, be better with friends. It'll yeah. be better with, yeah. with friends. So um, you know, New York is, and I just think America is just a really interesting place really in general. Real. It's not a real place. I feel like I was in a movie. <laughs> it's so weird, yeah. And I don't know if that's because we've grown up just watching a lot of like American films, yeah, and stuff like that. Is weird, but yeah, I definitely want to go with friends. So yeah, we're gonna be going next year for Labor Day. Yeah, weekend. we're gonna be there. Um, I won't go to other states as well. Like I would go to DC and all this stuff. I won't go to Atlanta and all mm. that. So soon come, soon there. But yeah, guys, that's, that's why we haven't recorded because I was in New York. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, maybe we'll do a live show when we go. Yeah, I think we should do a live show out there. I, I don't know. There's something about New Yorkers. They're very. Walk, there's a guy walking down the street in his Halloween outfit, mm-hmm. and this guy was walking past him. Yo, man! And the guy was like, "What?" He said. Like, you look fucking great. And he was like, thanks, man. And it was just like, that whole interaction was crazy. <laughs> but it was so lovely at the same time. Yeah. It started off like, rah, they're going to be. Yeah. Like, oh, okay. <laughs> no, Americans are mad, <laughs> nice and supportive. Yeah. And yeah, just good vibes. Did I tell you there's this guy? I don't, I think he thought I was a, a gay man. Mm-hmm. So I'm just walking past. I walked past him twice when I was going to the cafe and I was leaving the cafe. He's like, you n- Sorry, it's a different to beat that. <laughs> you n- Get your foodie ass out of this bitch. And he was definitely talking to me. And I just looked at him he was like, yes, you. Get out. Damn. Get your foodie ass away from me. And the thing is, I was just walking around in my business. I think maybe there's something. There's definitely. I said, Americans are not real. Yeah. And then I just started laughing and he just started laughing. <laughs> and then another guy, he saw me walk. He's like, oh, we got a date walking past us right now. This is a date. And I was thinking, I just kind of walking. I'm not trying to make no answer. He's like, I like to give hair too. <laughs> and let's give and he thinks he was some old man. He was an old man talking about how he likes to give heads. I said, Jesus. Was it what was that thing that that bing bong? But yes. Yeah, it's that's the vibe yes. that is given in it. <laughs> and the thing when I was out there, I thought about that video. <laughs> See, I stayed in Brooklyn. I stayed in um the first part was in Bed Stuy, and then the second part I stayed in Williamsburg. I, I spent all my time in Brooklyn. I went to Manhattan probably like two or three times. Mm. But I loved Brooklyn. The mm. characters were crazy. The rats were even crazier. That's mad still. But yeah, Brooklyn, I'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the live show. Live show. Your live show. What do you think oh, about it? Oh, yes. Mm-hmm. Swipe your sign. Swipe your sign. Swipe your sign. So as you you should know by now, I've got another podcast called Swipe Your Sign that our co-host with Celestial Tree, he's an astrologer and also Nathan Henry from Geordie Shaw. And we had two live shows, one in London, which was really nice to, to do that to a home crowd. My friends were there and stuff mm. like that. And then the second one was in Manchester, which was more of an in, more intimate crowd. There wasn't as many people as London, but the after party was lit. Mm. Guys, the party, <laughs> like the they know how to party. Yeah, I know how to get down. Mm. So that was a lot of fun. I definitely was drunk after that. I tried to go out in the village, but nothing was happening. So just went back to the hotel to FaceTime. And um, <laughs> and but yeah, it was just really nice to people coming out. Mm. Like, do you know what I'm saying? Because mm-hmm. this is the first thing I've done outside of Nana mm-hmm. that creatively. Mm-hmm. And in the beginning, it was like, okay, how am I going to join other people on the podcast? Mm. That isn't Nana. Do like you know different I'm personalities. Yeah, different personalities. And actually, it's just two separate things. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? It's not, I don't, I don't, the road that comes on Tutu's podcast is not necessarily the road that comes mm. on Swipe Sign. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? It's just two different um, topics. It's two different things. I'm, here, I'm talking to my best friend. Mm-hmm. Over there, we're doing, we're dating. So yeah, it's, just two it's different completely things. different. So, um, so yeah, so that's, that has been really fun to do. That's been really exciting. Um, I the live shows is <laughs> it's, 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 what's been excited about it is mm. dating so many people, so many different. Yeah, yeah. Like so, all together, I've probably dated one, two, three, four, five, six, including live shows. If we want to include people in live shows in uh, the Queen Black Pride prompt, Black yeah. Pride, 
six, nine, twelve, fifteen people mm. in total. Fifteen women in total have have been there to date. Mm-hmm. And that's that's been the most event for my actual dating life has been. I think people think that I'd be dating outside. I don't really date that much, but this has been the most I've dated. <laughs> yeah. It won't be my life at the same time. And um They're all and the thing is they're all very different. This so it's very different mm. and it's shown me a lot about what I mm. want in somebody as well, what I want in a partner. Yeah. And um and how I show up to dates, I think it's taught me a lot. The words of affirmation thing mm-hmm. definitely came up in these because a lot of people that like, I they couldn't tell if I liked them or not. Right. And it's the same thing that women in my life say to right. me as well. Mm-hmm. And um, so, yeah, I'm just learning. Working. I'm learning. Yeah. I'm learning and building and growing. Mm-hmm. And that's what you can do in life. Um, shout out to some, some of the girls getting down on their knees. <laughs> you know, me that they got them stallion knees. Mm-hmm. And somebody rapped to me in Manchester. Yeah. I'm somebody really sung to Nathan. This guy that sung to Nathan. Was he good? His voice. Oh, oh, wow. His voice was amazing. Did he pick him? him? He didn't pick Nathan picked himself and um, that one. He picked <laughs> oh, himself. No. That's, yeah, he picked himself. Oh. And actually I lied, it hasn't been 15 people. Three, six, nine, no, six, nine, ten, eleven. It's thirteen people, my bad. Mm. But yeah, they sang. I mean, he sang, it was really amazing. But the, their answers weren't giving. Right. The answers were not giving. It wasn't London. Right, were right. Yeah, no, because they were coming with the Riz in, in, in London. Yeah. Like, they really came. They were really fighting yeah, for, for the date. Yeah, you know, came. and a chance to be with you. So, yeah. you guys. Mm. Yeah. But it's all been fun. It's all been fun. And it's going to be continued fun as well. So, mm. make sure you just swipe your sign. Like, if guys, you haven't listen, already. If you haven't already, all the episodes are out now. They're also available on YouTube to watch. So, please support up the things. Because this is the first of a black queer dating podcast mm. that there is. And, again without numbers they don't feel like right. black queer things are worth pushing exactly. you know what i'm saying so lucky this and as they said it was we should be really lucky to have gotten that commission from the bbc because the bbc has never ever commissioned anything wow. like that ever before wow so support the thing you have to you support you have to support so there's more do you know so what i mean more. even if you don't want to see me on there <laughs> just support so somebody else can do it <laughs> <laughs> but we want to see you on there <laughs> yeah <laughs> um last thing i want to talk about is um <sighs> We've, we've we've spoken about this before like just like women thinking it's okay to maybe approach other women in 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 a way that's inappropriate mm. um yeah and it's i didn't want to i, I didn't want to end the podcast in this way but we have to talk about it because it happens so often and i feel like i'm gonna say it again because i think it's still happening if somebody doesn't give you like the go ahead to approach them in a romantic sense, please don't do that. Like, please, please, please don't do that. I think that because we are masculine presenting, women think it's okay to overstep boundaries. And that's that's never okay. You know, that is never, ever, ever okay. If I don't stare at you for longer than five seconds, <laughs> I'm not interested. If I is a long time, is a long time. <laughs> if I am not complimenting you, like giving you vibes, I'm not interested. Yeah. And I think so a lot of women or people, I don't know, but in my experience, a lot of women don't care about how the other person feels. They just know that they like you and they want you. Mm-hmm. And that's enough. Do you know what I mean? For them to do whatever they want to do. You yeah. know, they don't even know if you like them back or you fancy them back, but they will be making advances yeah. at you. Don't do that. It's entitlement. It's it's you know it's it's harmful actually. It's actually quite harmful because you also put the person in a very very awkward position. Yeah, and if someone like me, I I'm not always good at letting people down. Same. I'm not always good at like telling people that I'm not interested and things like that. And I think that there's an added pressure because we're now visible. Because mm. so like when you do let people down or when you do. You just look like an idiot. Mm. You look like a dickhead. You look like a dickhead. People, you look rude. are waiting for you to be a villain. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? And mm-hmm. to paint you that way. And so when you say you're not interested, all of a sudden you're met with like a victim mentality. Mm-hmm. Or you're just met with um, some sort of, oh, you're not a nice person mm. kind of vibe. Like mm-hmm. someone came in my DM, 
to ask her about Nana the other day and I was like, she's up my ass. Mm. And they were like, and be rude to her babies. Why are you coming to us? Mm. Go in her DM and ask her. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? And it's just, they just, people cannot wait to snap on yeah, you. Yeah, be like, oh, you. I didn't know you were such, you were such a rude person. Duh, 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 duh. Like, and they're going to throw the podcast in there too. I listen to your podcast. Now I'm not going to see your podcast anymore. Don't listen like, to it them. happens all the time. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> all the time. So there's this added pressure of, hold on, I don't want to come across as a bad person. I don't want it to affect tutus. I don't want to affect Nana mm. just because I told somebody I'm not interested. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? So I'm saying, so just use some tact. Mm-hmm. And sometimes you just know, if you're not sure if someone's like interested in mm-hmm. you, yeah, just don't. Yeah, if you're not the sure, they're not. If you're not sure, then then they just say that they're not. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Chances like, are that they're not. I still don't know how to deal with ad- unwanted advances. Mm-hmm. Like, I just don't. I just don't know how to deal with it. And I think I have to learn to deal with it better and to have a firmer stance and to be firm with those people mm-hmm. that overstep boundaries. Because it's such it's such a weird thing. I think as just like women in general, you know, growing up, we've always had people like doing, overstepping boundaries and we've never known how to act. And it hasn't changed because we're queer. Do you know what I mean? That hasn't changed. So I think I just need like women to do a bit better. Yeah. And yeah, not overstep those boundaries. Um because it's been happening quite often. Yeah, it's been happening quite often. Yeah. Us and our friend. Yeah. And we just, it's becoming quite harmful. Yeah. And it's also, I want to say, it's even intertwining in our friendships. Mm-hmm. And we just, it's, we don't want people's misjudgment to interfere with our friendships. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So you don't know how things affect people. And even like, for example, even if like you're somebody who's dated one of our friends or sure an interested one of our friends, or even, no matter how unimportant that situation was to you, mm-hmm. our our relationships with our friends are, like, are important to us. Do you know yeah. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So just think about that. Just think outside of yourself mm-hmm. before you step into things. And it seems like we're talking in code here from things that have happened, mm-hmm. and we are talking from code from things that have happened because we don't want to come and tell all our business mm-hmm. on here. We're not doing that. However, we know that some of you listen to podcasts. So let's learn and yeah. maybe you can think about it for other people too. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, because yeah, some of you listen to the podcast, so you'll know if you've been the perpetrator. Yeah. So I yeah, guys, a lot has happened in the last three weeks since we've been away, guys. <sighs> like people have been misbehaving, but next year's ep- next week's episode is going to be nice and cheerful. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we have to just get a few, a few things straight because a lot has been happening since we've been away. <laughs> yeah, we just need to get a few things off our chests because it's been very very frustrating. Even coming to this recording, I was just like, I don't want to be rude, but I'm just feeling so frustrated that mm-hmm. nothing else is nothing's going to come out. It's going to be nice. Do you know what I mean? Like. <laughs> I've tried, but um, yeah, yeah I, I guess that's yeah. that's our time. That's our time. We're going to be hopefully be here with Celestial next week. Yeah. Um, hopefully can we give away the guests? We're going to be here with Celestial next week from Swipe Sign. All things astrology related we'll be discussing. So I know you gays love that. Mm-hmm. So lock in next week as well. Yep. So thanks for listening, guys. Make sure you use the hashtag Tutus Podcast and Conversation on Twitter and on Instagram. Make sure you rate, like, review, all that good stuff. Yeah. Also, you can leave comments on our Spotify. Um, if you listen on Spotify, you can leave some comments for what you thought about the uh, episodes. Leave us reviews on Apple Podcasts. If you're a hater, don't leave us a review. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, until next week, peace.